in the animation the camera is getting near the iceberg and you want a big uh, surprise reveal for whatever it is inside that iceberg you would use the glare occlusion Hello and welcome to this new episode of Schiller Tips. My name is Pierre Schiller and I am a Blender Foundation Certified Trainer. My job is to help you use Blender and expand it and use it alongside with other softwares in your own 3D workflow. In this case, we will talk about the Dark Iceberg Anime Stylized Ice Shader. So the idea with this shader is that you will use it whenever you're encountering um, deep waters, deep cold waters, where the light does not reach. So this is the, the lower part of the iceberg, as you can see, that's why it's called Dark Iceberg. So you'll get this amazing, fantastic scene. And the second thing I want to tell you about is that now that we are creating more and more specialized shaders, you need to organize your library shaders. We have a node presets add-on I want to tell you all about so that you can organize your own shaders. You will come here into edit preferences and from here you will type node and you're going to find this one that it's called node node presets. I want you to activate that and as soon as you do that you'll be greeted with a targeting directory where all of your shaders will live. So I created this empty directory which is called Blender Shaders. In there I'm going to be placing all of the 9 anime shaders that you will be getting for free. If you haven't downloaded them yet, please check the video description below and go to the link, download them, they are for free. They have been created to celebrate our 10k community and such. So we have these two shaders here, as you remember, the 90s anime ice shader and also the ice barrier, which were the, win the previous winners from the previous weeks. So this is the directory path. I'm going to right click on it, copy it, and now I'm going to paste that over here. I'm going to uh, press enter, come down here to this burger menu. Yes, that's how it's called. And then save preferences. From there, just switch uh, that thing off. So how does that add-on work. Select your character, create any shader, like let's say this one is going to be called, I don't know, Model 1 shader. Like such. Model 1 shader. Alright, so once you've created your material output and you have given it a name, you will see it listed here. And let's just cut this out, remove it, and now Shift A and down here from this pop-up menu here over the shader editor shift a will allow you to access template here in template you will have a long list of all of the shaders that are going to be accumulated into that folder that we just saw so i have this that is called 90s anime ice i'm going to select it and with this i get my 90s anime ice shader back here in my file in this file so all I need to do is now to create Shift A, an emission shader, because that's what I want to use. And then I'm going to place it here. Let's connect that in here. Let's connect the color of the anime ice shader, the 90s anime ice shader. And Shift A, add a texture coordinate node. Press Enter. And grab this generated thing and connect it there. And sure enough, the shader will compile down here. And once it's done, you will get your shader there. From there, you, from there on, you can tweak it. You know, like it, it's the the scale size, the the ice scaling. You can press Shift because the values change rapidly. So let's just scale this to somewhere around there because it looks cool. Um, also, you can uh, click here so you can see the factor directly in the viewport in real time. So when you open this file, you're going to be greeted with this interface. The first thing that you're going to notice is that you can drag the playhead to scrub the timeline over here. And it plays with a nice animation so that you can see the shader in action, how it reacts to the focus and defocus of the camera. So that's pretty neat. The next thing you're going to notice is that the, um, the shader itself right here, it's been divided into different sections. Section 1 being the internal color plus all other parameters that will relate to the appearance of it. 
the second section which is all about cracks and finally the last section which is all about flakes if you select this and press tab you're going to enter inside the node group and you will see that all of the parameters have been correctly identified with a frame text colors and parameters so just in case that you import this into another new scene with another new object you have the facility to read the original values for this node inside the same node okay so that's pretty neat so if you forgot something you forgot to reset you can read the text from inside the node group to reset back your values over here and this texture coordinate the only thing that needs it's a texture coordinate node from your object so that it will know where it's going to draw the entire shader and as all of the other shaders this shader does not need a light it doesn't need any light and also doesn't react to lights so let's do the walkthrough, the parameters that we have for the dark iceberg shader. And as always, you can divide your window so that whatever you do on the top level, which is the shader level that you have here, will be reflecting whatever you do in, in the inside of the group, like I have right here. So basically I have two shader editor windows open, as you can see. And the, the only difference is that if I press this little arrow up, I'm going to go all the way up outside my node group which is this one but if I press tab I enter into my node group as you can see right here this is my complete setup everything has been labeled you can read whatever you need to uh, in order for you to change colors for example this is the inner region color and this one is the outer region color that you can see right here so these colors will change um, the internal uh, um, stream color current water stream <laughs> whatever and you can adjust that there the most important parameter I think you need to check out by yourself is this red parameter that you have right here once you set the colors for your for your ice shader for your dark iceberg shader you may probably leave everything as it is but you will want to uh, adjust the overall colors of the eyes once it is done for example let's say that you like this contrast you like this uh, setup then you can come here into this RGB curve node just before the end of the um, the shader 3 that you can see right here that's why it's uh, painted red color coded red then you can come here for example into the green channel and you may like to bump up just a tad so you can get another additional color this greenish color for the iceberg for the dark iceberg gives it a more fantasy look okay it will depend on your settings this is basically so that you can quickly adjust whatever you already created in one single node because this will adjust the RGB curves overall and if you don't want that then you can click that X it will um, return to the original factor values this C is for contrast so if you put this all the way over here you will get less contrast as you can see right there Control Z will not return this curve to the original position so you may as well remember where it was or you can actually copy the numbers here for the coordinates X and Y and now we want to add the group that we have right here which in this case is dark iceberg so group dark iceberg and then we're presented with this um, custom shader you can uh, open it so you can read it much better and we have the texture coordinate all the way up top then we go for the internal colors this region right here is the related it's it's related to the internal colors this other region right here is related to cracks and all of these parameters right here will allow you to tweak the flakes so let's connect this um, we don't need the principal shader because like we mentioned before this specific shader does not work with lights just connect it right there and you need a texture coordinate because that's what it is it is expecting right here so shift a let's add a texture coordinate 
and we're going to feed it the object output. Now let's see how it looks. So we have it right there. She is uh, textured correctly with the dark iceberg shader. One thing you, sh you should notice is that the default values from this specific size of object for this specific object size are not equal the same than this one. So if I click on that, you can see that some of the parameters have changed. For example, check out the cracks. The crack size is 3.8, while this, by default, does not receive any kind of size. But if I go 3.8, then we can see some variance. So for example, you can see that the mi micro flakes in the stream, it's 25, 29 for this size. So you can play with that, 25, 29, and then we get the flakes back again, this, this little flakes right here. So everything related to flakes is right here. So make sure that everything just matches accordingly and there should be no problem. So you can see that the glare occlusion, it's the big, it's a big, uh, it, it makes all the difference here. Glare occlusion, it's 0 0.4, while glare occlusion here is 0 0.79. So if you press 0 0.4, what this factor does, or what this uh, value does, is to reveal the iceberg. In the animation, the camera is getting near the iceberg and you want a big uh, surprise reveal for whatever it is inside that iceberg, you would use the glare occlusion uh, factor, okay? This runs rather pretty quickly, so I bid you to press shift and then left click on this parameter so you can move it very, very slow and you can animate this. So this is what you're supposed to get when you do the glare occlusion reveal. This is basically so that whenever you're animating your camera, you're going to do the big reveal, you know, because ice is just, it's still nature, it doesn't do anything at all. So we need something to emphasize the fantasy factor in this, and that's why you have this glare occlusion stuff. So at zero, it doesn't occlude anything. At one, it's plenty occluded, okay? So it's very cool and every other pattern is self-explanatory so i hope you have enjoyed this week's stylized eyes shader for your scene by the way when we reach shader number nine i will be announcing a new shader new special shader so stay tuned for that november rewards are juicy all of you constantinescu Pochi Wang, Sean, and Jusuke, Aki Shibuhara, and Jeffrey Jeffrey will get a fully rigged character, a video training teaching how to use it, and more. To get those rewards and more, consider supporting this channel over Patreon. Check the link in the video description for more details about November's rewards for Patreons. We are celebrating the 10k followers in YouTube big time. Try Blender. Blender is powerful and beyond industry compatible.